think that there's this opportunity to leave my sport and women's sports in a better place than I found it. In the last you know, several months, I found a lot of power in my voice and in fearlessness. I feel like I have something to say. As far as what message I want to share with people is that even in something as like all-consuming as motherhood, you still deserve to have a space to pursue things that like light you up and kind of set your soul on fire. Okay. My name is Chelsea Sodaro. I am a professional triathlete and mom to Sky. We are in Davis, California. This is where I grew up. I'm doing a little training stint here before my next race, and we're filming for Wahoo Frontiers. I came to triathlon pretty late in life. I have not been a lifelong triathlete. I had a competitive nature from very early on. My family has always been really active. My parents were kind of amateur triathletes and runners, and my mom was a collegiate gymnast. And so, you know, they love being outside and we were always going on backpacking trips and started soccer as young as you can start soccer and swam and we were always outside doing stuff. And so that like was part of the ethos of our family life. Again. Go. Go. I think that I found my real confidence in sport when I started running. And especially in high school when I started to have like some early success. That's when I felt like sport became kind of part of me and my identity. And I got a lot of self-confidence from being good at something. Yeah, you know, in my family, we're really not about the like participation trophies. We want to know who the best is. You can respect the people you're out there competing against and have a lot of reverence for what they're all doing and be kind, but we get more out of ourselves when we compete. The most iconic race triathlon, in my opinion, is the Kona Ironman World Championships. This is it right here. Chelsea Sodaro is on a lead drive and she's making her way home. So to win that race was like, I mean, it has like made my career a success. Well over two decades since we saw an American take the crown here in the women's race and today with style. Chelsea Sodaro has not looked back, literally or figuratively, as she's coming down the storied Alidi Drive, about to approach the Banyan Tree and all her glory. You know, my whole family is very service-minded. Like, my brother is in the Air Force, my husband is a firefighter, my dad was a high school teacher, and my mom is a physician, and I'm an athlete, which is such a selfish pursuit. That's always really bothered me. So now that I have this, like, platform, which is just so cliche, I feel like I have an opportunity to make some sort of difference beyond just like biking in my pain cave. Uh, what's on tap for today's ride? Got a little three hour cruise around Yolo County. Just like a, yeah, just easy endurance. First longer ride since I raced this weekend and my legs are finally coming around, so hopefully it won't be too painful. Yeah, just a chill day. Casual three hours. 
I feel like for the first time in my career, a lot of support of me as a person, that there's like investment in the story and the actual process. And it's not just about what happens on the race course. Which I've had the opportunity to actually work with Wahoo for a couple of years now. And I was like, so excited when that became an option for me because I am like not a tech savvy person at all. I just needed to work. <laughs> Fundamentally, I'm like a, an extremely competitive person. I really love my job, like the swimming, biking, and running aspect of my job. It makes me feel alive to pursue something at such a high level and to have my like heart and soul on the line where I can be in a position to achieve at a really high level, but also be so profoundly disappointed. To live on that kind of razor's edge with my craft is really fulfilling for me and also like an inspired way to live. I feel really alive. Seeing excellence in motion is really inspiring and watching somebody do something at the highest level to their best of their ability personifies the human condition and it's like greatest potential. But I also feel that sport is a microcosm of society and it's, it's a place where we can, we can call the shots and we can change the rules and show what's possible for human performance, but what also could be possible for people. I chose motherhood in the prime of my career, and I have learned a lot so much through that experience. It's been way harder than I imagined and I never set out to inspire anybody by doing this. It was just something that I wanted in my life and I felt like I needed to have a kid to feel like fulfilled as a person. Hi. It's raining. Ready? One, two, three. Do you want to hold your bears? Here. Mm, of course. Baby, 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 baby. And I don't ever want to push that on anybody. I don't, I don't think that everyone needs to choose that or should choose that, but it has become very clear to me how like this country is not set up for us. And I have a lot of privilege. I am a white middle-class woman with resources and access. And I haven't been able to get the support that I need. Like I cannot imagine what it is like for people who don't have the resources that I do. And so I feel very passionate about making things better what could be possible if we could give maternity leave to athletes, if we could have free childcare at events for athletes, if we could have mental health services for postpartum athletes, if we put a value on that, if we can appreciate that mothers bring a special skill set to the workforce, especially in endurance events, if we could make some of those things easier for moms in the arena of professional athletics where our whole currency is our body, that is setting an example for other industries. I mean, I don't necessarily want her to be a triathlete. It's, as far as like the fun factor, it's like a lot of suffering, right? It's not like type one fun, like when you're playing a game. Wait, it's a ballerina dino? Whoa, that's cool. He has nose. He 
has a nose? That does Tyson have a nose? He does. He does. Do you have a nose? <laughs> I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform and achieve, and I have these moments pretty regularly where I look at my kid and I think, gosh, none of that really matters. Like, you're what really matters. I don't want her to put limits on herself. I want her to know that she can, like, have all of the things that she wants in life, but she doesn't have to do it by herself. I want her to feel empowered to take risks in life, to try new things, to bet on herself. I don't want her to feel any like pressure from me or Steve that she needs to do a certain thing or be a certain way. I just want her to be herself. It's probably annoying to people that I like continue to bring up my motherhood, but it's what I am like most proud of. I think the ability to show up for my daughter and also choose myself at the same time.